Otto Miller has a long list of published works, including a, modern, a History of Modern Morocco, Berber and others beyond the tribe and nations in the Maghreb, the architecture of memory and minority quarter of a Muslim Mediterranean city, and the Melach of Fez, her first book, Reflections on Special, uh, special, special Turn in Moroccan Jewish History. So thank you, Professor Miller, that you are with us. She recently published the book, Ears of Glory, Nelly Benata, and the Pursuit of Justice in Wartime, North Africa. And Professor Miller's lecture will be on Lost and Found, Rescuing Helene Cazes Benata from the Archives. Professor Miller, please. please. Thank you very much, Chaim. It's a pleasure to be with you and uh, have the privilege of uh, speaking at this gathering, uh, uh, something I never would have imagined when I started my own research on Nelly Benatar, uh, something like this would happen. So many distinguished historians, Israeli historians and others to uh, come together on International Holocaust Remembrance Day to talk about uh, Nelly Benatar. Her story is important. It's far more important than her personal biography. Her story belongs to the history of the Maghreb during World War II. Her life fills a gap in our knowledge of how the Jews of North Africa lived through the war and experienced the Holocaust. Her biography offers a framework for understanding the wider picture of the global conflict. At the same time, her appearance on the world stage gives her individual heroism even greater meaning. Two dimensions, the micro and the macro, complement each other. Setting our sights at both levels we gain insight into how ordinary people became entangled in world-shaking events. Nellie Benatar's personal story gives depth and reality to our understanding of the impact of World War II on North Africa and on North African Jewry. While I was doing research on Years of Glory, and it took me eight years to write this book, I became aware of the strong ties between Benatar's life and the global setting. Reading her private papers, I discovered something that many of you already know, that archival research is essential because it eliminates platitudes, it erases commonly held expectations, and it banishes simplistic moral conclusions. Personalities who emerge from the archive cease being merely names. They become powerful agents who exert their own will, endure hardships, and remind us of their ability to have an impact on events and ideas beyond themselves. In other words, ordinary people cease being victims and subordinates and become leading actors in the shaping of history. I first met Nelly Danatar while working in the archives of the Protectorate in Rabat, and I stumbled across her name by accident. Reading her letters to French colonial officials, I asked myself, who is this Jewish woman, for clearly she was Jewish, writing to General Charles Dogues, head of the protectorate administration? Where did she get the chutzpah to write to him in such elegant, forceful, and polished prose about the condition of Jewish refugees stranded in Morocco? How did she, an ordinary person, gain access to Nogues? the chief architect of Vichy's policies in North Africa. Her voice was so strong, so authoritative, so confident. It was hardly the voice of a subaltern. I thought to myself, here's a woman of interest, but I yet I did not fully understand precisely who she was. I Googled her name, of course, and discovered that her private papers uh, from World War II, 18,000 documents in all, were deposited in the Central Archives for the History of the Jewish People. I bought a plane ticket to Jerusalem, read a tiny portion of the archive, but my learning curve was not improved. I realized that Nelly Benatar had something to do with refugees during World War II, but exactly what, it was still not clear to me. It took me many months to unravel the mystery of Nelly Benatar, who she was, and what exactly was her significance. Slowly, like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, 
her, her life began to fall into place. The more I read about World War II in the Maghreb, the more I read other biographies and memoirs, the more I searched in other archives in Israel, in France, in Great Britain, and the United States. 25 different collections in all. The better I understood the dimensions of Benatar's achievements. In the process of doing research, I realized that individual Moroccan Jews like Nellie Benatar, in sharp, in sharp contrast with the common wisdom, were deeply enmeshed in global events. The history of the Jewish wartime experience in North Africa is a history that is far from complete. My biography of Nelly Benatar is just one small piece of a brilliant panorama of heroism. Many other North African Jewish heroes are waiting to be discovered, studied, talked about, and celebrated. World War II was a critical turning point for Maghrebi Jews. It was a key moment in the transition from a colonial to a nationalist era, during which the Jewish condition in the Maghreb changed radically. While writing Nellie's story, I understood that her engagement with refugees, with the end of empire, the Holocaust, the rise of Arab nationalism, the post-war Jewish problem, all of these topics are elements of her wartime experience, pieces of a much larger puzzle that was not hers alone. Like Benatar, during the war years, the Jews of North Africa of a certain educational class evolved from having little understanding of the problems of world Jewry to a deep involvement in them. Here's my own short list of heroes in waiting who crossed paths with Nelly Benatar and are likely candidates for further research. First of all, I'll mention the name of Albert El Koubi, who was the chief architect on the ground of a secret underground cell in Casablanca to support the Allied invasion of North Africa. Kubi was an Algerian Jew who was outraged by Vichy's crimes. He was caught and tortured by the Vichy police, yet he survived to tell his story. A close friend of Benatar, he inspired here with his heroism and dedication to democratic values. They plotted together to rescue fugitives from Hitler and transmitted important information to the allies through the Moroccan underground which no one has ever written about. El Kubi is a truly a hero in waiting and his story is ready to be told. His personal archive is there in Jerusalem at the CAHJP. Another hero in waiting is Prosper Cohen, a Moroccan Jew from Meknes who was appointed as a member of the Moroccan delegation to the World Zionist Congress in Atlantic City in 1944. Cohen took the place of Benatar after she was refused entry to the United States. Cohen's fervor for Israel before 1948 is a story worth retelling and just as compelling as his post-1948 activities in the new state of Israel that Yaron Sur has written about. His papers are there in Jerusalem. He was a Zionist when other Moroccan Jews were either neutral or uninterested and he deserves recognition. Samuel D. Levy is another unrecognized hero, a Moroccan Jewish intellectual who was the moral and political leader of Moroccan youth in the 1930s. He was a mentor to a whole generation of modern Jewish intellectuals, including Dele and Moises Benatar. Levy headed the Moroccan delegation to the historic 1944 Congress in Atlantic City, where he was the spokesman for the Moroccan Jewish position. He argued that unlike Jews elsewhere, Moroccan Jews should stay in place and rebuild their homeland in Morocco. Needless to say, his position was not well received. Because of his contrarian stance, he's been forgotten by history. Jack Pinto is a name worth knowing. A cousin of Benatar, Pinto was a wealthy Moroccan Jewish businessman who migrated to New York City before the war. In no time at all, he had the ears of important people in Washington and on Wall Street. Jack Pinto was influential in shaping policy of the Joint Distribution Agent Committee toward Morocco in the post-war years, another forgotten hero. And finally, I should mention a European Jew whose life was entangled with Morocco during the war years and Moroccan Jews. His name was Maurice Vanikoff, 
also known as Maurice Vanino, a human rights lawyer. His name is associated with a campaign to win recognition of the Jewish soldiers who were expelled from the French army in 1940 and sent to prison camps in the Sahara. Vanikoff's complete records are found in the archives of the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Paris. These people may not yet be regarded here as heroes, but their actions were brave and worthy, and they deserve entry into the historical record along with Nelly Benatar. We have to remember that ordinary lives are also important to reshape our understanding of the past. Individual actions speak volumes. The beating of a Jewish boy in the street, the confiscation of Jewish property, the expulsion of a Jewish child from school, all minor details buried in the archives that add up to a complex picture of the wartime experience of the Jews of North Africa. The archives are full of such moments, waiting for dedicated storytellers to bring them to life. We learn from the archives that individual lives in their narrative form have equal or greater power to the so-called forces of history. If Nelly Benatar's life is a model for this sort of storytelling, then she has done her work. I'll end this talk with a plea, this short talk, with a plea to my Israeli friends and colleagues. Please do not name straight streets or parks or squares or schools after Nellie Benatar and think that the work is done. That would be missing the point. Ordinary people need to know why she's being celebrated here today. We should write about her in the newspapers and books and encyclopedias and other articles. We should make a film about her and we should teach the next generation in the schools about the Moroccan woman who defied Hitler and Pétain and the whole Vichy machine, who stood up for human rights, who defended refugees, who protected the homeless, the stateless, and the exiled, whether they were Jews or not. That's the true and most enduring lesson of Nelly Benatar's life. <laughs>